All right, so welcome to Magpie House again. All right, so the, the third round, and um, we've got all our mobile phones off. Yep. No. Mm. Yes. Slang. Slang. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, I'm, I'd like to thank you, Daryl. I'm grateful for the a few moments to say a few words. And uh, the, the prior talks that we put online, the, the jurisdiction and the quorum for and non Jews, um, they're getting quite a bit of interest. And it's giving us the opportunity to move mountains. Uh, that's, what I, that's the way I put it. And I think that's called faith, or uh, which overrides reality, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, and that's a, uh, a basic metaphysics concept and uh, one of the gatherings that we were running which is, is based on metaphysics and I thought about doing it Friday night but that's, that's a pain. Well, I'm going to be doing it Saturday afternoon at 1pm. Right? So it's after our yoga classes. Um, if you're interested in metaphysics, uh, because it's got Natural law, and natural law to me is the highest law. Yeah, it trumps all man made laws, as far as I'm concerned. Um, now, one, oh, yes, that's right. So, uh, natural law, Saturday is 1 pm. Now, Thomas wants to start a, uh, a forum, a workshop type forum on Monday nights, if anybody's interested. Uh, let me know. It'll be Monday night, 7, 7.30, uh, and we'll see how that goes. Um, about one year ago, uh, our early, one of our early forums, it featured tax consciousness, and we quoted um, from one of the books we used, taxation is a manipulated material creation, spiritually immoral, and a primitive understanding of leadership and management. Um, so that comes from basic metaphysics. It's spiritually immoral and primitive. Right? We don't need taxes in order to run our infrastructure or, or our services. I might be able to give you some more insight into that. Um, but from the same source of material, the concept that we've shared before is uh, Quoting again, governments corrupt to the core always reflect the consciousness of the people. Collective higher integrity no longer attracts corruption. In other words, they are us and we are them. There's, there's no separation between us. So in other words, we, we put them there. The government is both a collective and a personal responsibility that we all need to take. Uh, take on. You know, if, if we're corrupt, uh, that, if the government's corrupt, it's probably a reflection of the people. Uh, that's what. That's something we've put out for quite some time. Because uh, if we don't see it that way, we, we can't see a way to change it. Um, if we separate ourselves, us <coughs> and them, uh, that only seeks to divide us, right? And in, instead of unite us. And do we seriously imagine that the circumstances of our lives are just coincidence that we take no responsibility for? Um, as I was saying earlier, uh, the natural law uh, overrides all the other man-made laws. Uh, and the natural law is, is the law of cause and effect. What goes around comes around. Uh, basically the law of karma. If we don't understand that, we have another hope. Uh, that's what I say anyway. Um, now, uh, I mentioned last year we would be playing episodes of Kingdom and Empire, and we're going to start that tomorrow night. And Kingdom and Empire is uh, a doco series about uh, Jerusalem and Rome. Right? If, if you think we're oppressed now, go back to Jerusalem and Rome. And it covers a, an important concept um, regarding pulling the tail of the monster. If you pull the tail of the monster too hard, it's going to come back at you. 
and it will not only affect you, but it will also affect the people around you. That's, that's part of the message of that, that story. Uh, uh, just like tax, uh, if, you start, if you stop paying tax just like that, without doing your, your, your background work, they're going to come at you. Right? So a little bit at a time, we're, we're changing the paradigm. Okay. Now, just very recently, we participated in a demonstration of collective power or natural law. Uh, we, we hold an annual Earth Healing Meditation here every October, and we're connected to about 500 groups around the world, and we all do a, a healing meditation based on, um, well, healing, healing, whatever around the world. And that's with simultaneously with hundreds of groups worldwide. Uh, we also did a one on Boxing Day because of the fires uh, which were getting out of control. And a, a group organised a worldwide collective prayer on the 3rd and the 4th of January. And magically, let's say, on the very next day, cyclonic appeared, uh, activity appeared <coughs> in northwest Australia. Right? And we haven't had, uh, we, the rains haven't stopped since then. Now, is that a coincidence? Uh, who thinks it's a coincidence? Nobody? <laughs> Maybe? <laughs> a couple? Right. Turn off the radio. Um, <laughs> we're saying that the power of collective thought can affect the weather. Now, if we can affect the weather, we can affect everything, right? And so, Pretty soon, we're going to organise a collective prayer to uh, address some bigger issues, uh, and we're, we're setting the date of 29th of February. We'll look out for it. It's, it's a collective it prayer to reverse easy, deployment of 5G, because according to some of us, 5G will be catastrophic for life. Oh, isn't it 26,000 scientists wrote a letter or something? Whatever it is, yeah. I mean, there's, there's been <laughs> whopping not just us, world. unqualified folk. Yeah, there's, there's global protests about this uh, happening, and that's important, right? We're raising the issue, but now we need to shift into the solution. Uh, I've, I've been proposing a solution. It's based on what we were promised 20 plus years ago, which is high speed fiber optics to every uh, mm -hmm. premises. We didn't get it. They gave us ADSL, which is vastly inferior. And no child would be in poverty? No, 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 no. no child would be in poverty? In, uh, we've heard yeah. before, yeah, all yeah. Houses, no? yeah. And, and the other one they, they put out is fixed wireless, and that's for the country areas, but they can put fibre to the country areas. Yeah. You know, in the 1930s there was legislation and communication. Fibre is out of date. Fibre is out of date. It's, gone. it's history. Fibre is history. It's out of date. They're still installed in England and Ireland. That's well, a new, new technology, um, it's out of date. Copper was, copper was installed wild, so. from the well, 1930s. Is, is the goal now. Yeah, copper was installed from the 1930s. Now, in the 1990s, we were all supposed to get fibre. Yes. We didn't get it. We, uh, according to a report, we paid for it, but we didn't get it. And that doesn't make sense. And now we've got a very poor system called the NBN. So <laughs> the corruption of the original NBN, from what I can tell. Anyway, um, so we paid for it twice then. Possibly. Yeah. Do you want to say something? Uh, yes, uh, just briefly in regards to prayer for those people who believe in praying and meditation, Cryon has given us the idea to set our alarm clocks for 11 11 and all just do a very short uh, meditation every day. Mm -hmm. That's it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. That's probably enough from me. Uh, we need to get back to, to Daryl and uh, and uh, if we if we keep raising con consciousness, right, we can make Daryl redundant and he can go off on holiday. <laughs> uh, maybe you enjoy this stuff. <laughs> so you might as well keep going. All right. So thank you. Thanks, George. Let's get into it. So, yeah. were we all at the last meeting that I had, that I conducted here?
Yep. So we're all pretty much up to speed on that. Coram Judas is. Yeah. Can you please give us a refresher? <laughs> <laughs> so what is Coram Judas? That's what I'm asking. Lawful sitting court. No. Correctly arraigned under the powers of the original constitution. Yeah, it's, it's, it's jurisdiction. Okay. And yep. there's only one jurisdiction that's recognised in Australia, and what's that? Federal. That's right. Okay. Right. Yeah. Now, with that in mind, there's also a term, coram non judis. And what does that mean? Non jurisdiction. It's not lawful legislating. Not before a judge. Okay? Not before a judge. So, now I'm going to take you to a High Court case. 1938. And Dixon was the judge. It was five judges, and all four of the other judges agreed with Dixon. Right now, this is a precedent. And this puts on notice, and basically, as Dixon said in this case, every single ruling that's not Colin Judas is void. Yes. All right? And void of bull. So we're going to sort of walk this path tonight. So have we all operated on Osley? We all know Osley pretty well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so I want to go to the High Court in this particular case. We go to the High Court. We click. Can everyone see that okay? Yep. Yeah. So, 1938, February. And that's the case. It's one of the most important cases in Australia's history. Because of this room. So, what is all going on? Explain. Okay. <coughs> Everyone's got details written here. I can't see the first word of the case. It's something in basket shoes. Parisian. 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 It's P A R I S. I.E. double -E, basket shoes prize winning versus wine. So it's HCA 7 of 1938. Now, this was when the High Court was sitting Coram Judas. So these all these justices were able to generate what's called a judge's certificate. Okay, that means that certificate bears the name of the judge, the jurisdiction the judge is sitting in with this, the seal of the court and it's signed off by the judge. So the judge has taken um, uh, all the responsibility. And more importantly, that judge has taken an oath to Her Majesty because Her Majesty is the Chief Justice of all of the courts throughout the Commonwealth. Okay? So at the moment we've got judges and magistrates who have taken an oath to the state. So they're Coram non Jews. Okay? So we go down to Dixon's um, judgment and there's the key passage. Yeah. Can everyone read that? Mm -hmm. no. <laughs> no. 
Uh -huh. Where there is a disregard of or failure to observe the conditions, whether procedural or otherwise, which attend the exercise of jurisdiction, of jurisdiction or govern the determination to be made, the judgment or order may be set aside and avoided by proceedings by way of error, certiorari or appeal, but if there be want of jurisdiction, then the matter is quorum non judis. It is as if there were no judge and the proceedings are as nothing. They are void and voidable. CP, the case of the Marshall C. 42. It says they are void and not voidable. No, it says they're void, not voidable. Yeah. Void, it's not voidable. So say you were able to establish on his coronal genius, high court, etc. But you've already suffered an absence, right? So then we would have to step into how do we, you know, is the technology of uh, law and can we suit that whole thing and suit that argument? Does that, I mean, everyone's service is not different, but in my case, I need to suit. Um, or, or make the, the, the government liable. Mm -hmm. So I have. So if I was able to establish this, is that correct? Then you have to go and file separately a completely separate case saying that this is now void. You know, if you're successful in that argument, so now I want compensation. Does that make any sense? What I'm saying? Yeah. Because that all that achieves is to say, well, yeah, it's void. Right? <laughs> but well, if you've suffered damage. Um, then you have to step into this whole argument about um, you know, the liability of the common yeah. what, what we use in this particular case is the presumption. Yeah. Right. So whenever the system applies any claims against us, regardless, anyone within alleged government, right, we ask the question, is is your authority recognisable and traceable back to the Commonwealth Constitution? <coughs> Any judgments that have been passed, is that judgment coram judis or is it coram non judis? So, if you're asking who is, where the power has been invested from, yeah, that's that's we ask the questions of those who are holding the orders over us. So in your particular case, you've lost property. So there would have been people within the system, be it sheriffs or whoever, who have taken that problem. So then the question needs to be put back to them, were they relying upon a coron judis order or a coron non judis order? And here's the High Court case precedence. Mm. Yeah, so, we all, ask the question. Like, yeah. it, it's all been well just to picture Hey, listen, I'm owed compensation. Okay. But first of all, we have to let the individual or the department or the group of individuals know that, there, that this exists, that jurisdiction is what you're requesting, and whether the orders they relied upon and the removal of your property is actually correct. Yeah. Okay, because there is only one law in this country, and that's um, been established and, and they've been eroding this law for quite some time. <coughs> so we need to put the question back to those in alleged authority. <coughs> but the, the argument's pretty complex um, in the High Court with all the authority and some case law. Um, I've looked at a fair bit of that and it's just, it's not, it hasn't, there's a number of things that just haven't been settled in the High Court. The questions have never been answered. Well, but we so need to just focus on whether orders that have affected us or our properties were done correctly. So we ask the question, we don't get into arguments. We, we avoid arguments. We just put the question to those who have enforced their alleged orders. Because Dixon said it, it's void. So who, who's going to make the decision? Sorry. But I think it, it, it brings well, clarity, hopefully, to, to the point you're making. 
there's enough, there's statutory bodies all over the place. We've got state jurisdiction, state constitutions, we've got the, you know, the Commonwealth Constitution, which is in dispute. We've got the Judiciary Act 2003, all the argument around the Commonwealth's liability or the liability of any statutory body in a federal jurisdiction. Um, there's still argument around whether we apply the Constitution, the Australian Constitution Act 1901, or the Judiciary Act, um, I think it says 73, and it says 756. Part 31. There's a whole lot of argument that still appears to me to have been unsettled. There's never been rulings on this. So, so this argument continues. So my sort of question is, who am I fighting? You know, I'm about to step into the High Court um, with the, and, and argue on the basis of current authorities some of these issues. But at the end of the day, what's the, you know? Who, Who's the statutory body that I'm going to try and get compensation from? Is it the sheriff's office? Is it the law firm that's broken the law left, right, and centre? I've beaten two already, as you know. Like five times in total, I've beaten them. Um, and I've got one left. I, I can sue them. I'll try to. I can sue a statutory body. Um, but, you know, it's knowing who to sue. <laughs> I mean, it's a Victorian. Uh, Sorry to do this to you, but you've got to know who it is that you're making a claim from. No, against. No, 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 sorry. Yeah, yeah. You don't have to know. Right. Yeah. You have to put oh, the question to them. Yeah. You show me what, where you're getting your authority. Yes. Yeah. Right? And then it becomes an automatic. They have to respond to what you're saying. On well, you, you put them on notice. Yeah. Carol? Can we leave the questions to later on? Because we're not yeah, sorry. To no, it's all right, Mike. So, oh, yeah, well, right. Well, we yeah. left them to later on, because that used to be the CLRA a few years ago. I used to watch you, and if somebody asked a question, then the whole thing went out the door, Mike. Yeah. <laughs> no, no <laughs> disrespect, Mike. What, 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 what yeah. we, I mean, we're just following on from what yeah. is up on the board. Yeah. And I'm just trying to reiterate and mm. get it through to people yeah. that. We ask questions. We don't get into arguments. So I guess the power of the right. We know there is only one jurisdiction in this in this country, and we hear quite often. And this has been since around about 1907. There's been this thing called state jurisdiction raised. Well, does, has anyone read that in section 71 of the constitution? No. It's a lawyer-raised jurisdiction. It doesn't exist uh, in reality. So it's, it's as funny as the Queen of Australia. It's it's <laughs> part of the deception. Was it just a way of uh, being able to control certain parts? It's um, it's a way of expressing the state courts mm. separate from they've tried desperately to separate the states from the Commonwealth. So what is the Commonwealth? So it's with all of us. It's a political union. Right? So all of the states are what? Within and under the Queen. It's a political union. You cannot separate yourself. You cannot take Victoria away from the Commonwealth and still call itself the Commonwealth. It, that's, this is what the Constitution enshrined in 1900. It said, no longer can these colonies run independently. Okay, they all are now one. And you know you're in a commonwealth when you are under and as a subject of the Queen because citizens are an entity that's outside of the Commonwealth and has no relevance inside the Commonwealth. Yeah. Okay, they keep entrapping us through the name without the full registration of the name, which is John Smith, subject of the Queen. Okay, therefore there is only one jurisdiction that can be applied. Federal jurisdiction, doesn't matter whether you're in a state court or whether you're in the high court, that's the only jurisdiction that can exist. And the lawyers will try and tell you otherwise. They'll say, no, no, this is a state court exercising state jurisdiction. 
That's not the case. That's the deception. And who are the culprits? Lawyers. Oh, no. Judiciary allowed. The states. Yeah. Mm. The states are the problem. That's yeah. the elephant in the room, guys. These states have been kicking and screaming since Federation that they've lost their independence. And they've been trying to claw it back ever since to this very day. And they use the Australia Act to do that. And yet, they were not even granted that power under the Australia Act. It's the states. They're the problem. It's not the Commonwealth. The states have been trying to run separate from the rest, independent. And they've been attacking us and taking of our goods, our, our goods taking of our property mm. <coughs> under a false coram non judis ju jurisdiction. So we call them out on it. And we ask the question. We put it back to them. Eventually these people will wake up. You know, in the tax case that we're, we, we're in with the, the county court, they're now up to the fifth barrister. <laughs> All right. Barristers have been running from this case um, like the play. When did it start? That was uh, last year, earlier, started last year. Okay. okay. Five barristers, <clears throat> uh, one deputy commissioner of taxation, um, uh, two groups of solicitors, they've all run. So what was, sorry, what was the case anyway? Well, it was, a, it was a, a, they're, they're seeking um, a debt, a, a claim debt by the commissioner against Mike for about, I think it's total a million dollars. Oh, my God. Yeah. So we've been calling them out. Is this debt applicable to a subject of the Queen? Okay. Okay, we've just been asking the questions. We don't throw stones at them. <laughs> right? Too many people like to pick up a stone and throw it at them. You don't do that. You ask the question and wonderful things happen. They cannot answer. They run. The minions who are exercising this deception quickly wake up and just go, well, I'm out of here. So, so what have they said? They've avoided the answering the question. There's no answer. But then there that is means, no answer. Yeah. So therefore, really... we keep saying, show your jurisdiction. How long does that go on for, though? How long is a piece of string? Can't he charge them for his time? We've got a... This is why really? we, we've got a two-prong attack going on at the moment. So we're in England at the moment, in London, and we're, we're pressuring the system there as well as pressuring the system here. So and now we've woken up to where the problem is. It's not the Commonwealth, it's the States. The states have been orchestrating this deception for so long now. They've been manipulating their constitution and trying to create a separate jurisdiction, all under the heading of the Republic. They've actually got legislation in place that says that um, essentially uh, the Constitution will be put aside the moment the Republic is declared. Oh, I bet they have. Doesn't the Constitution, though, discuss about state constitutions? That's right, 106. So it foresaw that there was a requirement to have state constitutions? Absolutely. And that was the, the, one of the strong points with the drafting of Federation. So, but was that a mistake? It's, it's a, a stepping stone. So what was the point of it? We've gone from having more or less independent colonies to forming one political union uh, and then they've been trying to kick it back 
to a dominion, independent dominions. Okay. Now, funnily enough, Australia was the only country within the Commonwealth that could not have been labelled a dominion at Federation. We were the only one. And because we were running purely independently with the voice of the people, and the voice of the people was enshrined in that constitution. So the key sections that we look to are course section 128 but this is also a very important section that a lot of people see and causes the system an enormous problem and that's section 123. So the Parliament of the Commonwealth may with the consent of the Parliament of the State and the approval of the majority of the electors of the state. So, no matter what the parliament wants, they need to come to the people. That's the referendum right there. It's a referendum clause within, with respect to um, the increase, diminution or alteration of territory. Okay, the limits of the state. So if a state's to be limited in any way, they need to get the people's permission. Limited by geographical boundary or limited in power? Power, it, 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 it comes back to interpretation yeah. of those words. Okay? How the limits are to be applied and where. Now in order to get a full grasp on this section 123, now you've seen that. Um, let's have a look at, uh, okay, I'll go to clause 6. Now this is the part of the constitution that can't be touched by the people. This is the UK part. Okay, only England can, can change this part. And it's the definition, so the Commonwealth, so I mean the Commonwealth of Australia, the states shall mean such of the colonies of New South Wales, New Zealand, Queensland, Tasmania, Victoria, West Australia, South Australia, including North, the Northern Territory of South Australia, as for the time being as parts of the Commonwealth, and such colonies or territories as may be admitted into or established by the Commonwealth of States, and each of such of the parts of states of the Commonwealth shall be called as states. Yep. Um, so what I'm highlighting here is a territory. Territories are external, predominantly. Okay? So we now, we've got that in our heads. So the kings have got a problem, haven't they? Oh, they've got a major problem. they got a major problem. So we look at the seat of government. The seat of government of the Commonwealth shall be determined by the Parliament not um, and shall be within territory which shall have been granted to or acquired by the Commonwealth and shall be vested in and belong to the Commonwealth and shall be in the state of New South Wales. So when they created the ACT, they needed to go to the voters under section 123 because it's reduced the size of the state, not only in a geographical term. We were it okay to create uh, the Australian capital state, but when they called it a territory, it became external. That would be deliberate, like Washington did. External to the state or external to the country? Well, external to the, the people. The, essentially, the society. People. It's like Washington DC, they deliberately do it. So, so we does that leave Northern Territory? But it says that it shall be within territory, which will be yeah. required. Territory, but territory, territory with a small t. Yeah. yeah, you can't, you know, the, the, there's a distinct call for territories to be external. So if we were to claim Norfolk Island, or Timor, or any one of these smaller islands, then we can call that a territory. 
But as far as the Constitution is concerned and the definitions of the states, that's confirmed. Now, when it talked about South Australia, it said South Australia meant the, the South Australian <coughs> Territory. So before they created the Northern Territory, they needed to go to the electors of South Australia. They never did. There are definitely things they need in the Northern yeah. Territory. It's, it's, at, at, it's external to the yeah. other states. It is. It is yep. external. So, yeah, they haven't been really... They haven't been able to get a full grasp on the meaning what, of this what was, the, what was the purpose, though, uh, say, for Northern Territory to become a territory in no state? That's something only those uh, either, either in Hansard or those who are in government at the time can answer. Yet they, to find these things. Yeah, I think they tried to become a state, but it's been rejected. Yeah. <coughs> there's, and so there's something there that allows you to revert back mm -hmm. to something we haven't quite got to the bottom of. Yeah. But essentially, um, we've got a situation where the definitions through Clause 6 of what a state is hasn't been adhered to. New Zealand's run amok again without the approval of the electors. Okay. Well, what was going on? Northern, Northern New Zealand is controlled by the Queen. Well, they are, but they're, they're, they're trying to run separate to the Commonwealth of Australia, mm. which is why would they do that when we're all one political union? It's, there's a lot of questions that really need to be answered. They signed a treaty. Yeah. Yes, um, and herein lies another problem, and that is the treaty um, of what was signed in 1973. So we're all aware of the. Um, we celebrated it yesterday, actually. Uni Draw Tree. Yeah. I thought it was 67. They celebrated it. Bill Turner and everybody else. Oh. <laughs> he went up there, yeah. We can take this as a thank you for celebrating. That's why he's wearing his hat. Can you do a word search? Um, it was here. Yeah. Um, and uh, there is a, a getting out of this treaty clause. So this has taken the, the place of your voice in all legislation, this article, uh, this um, treaty. Um, realistically, this is the foreigner that's been drafting all legislation. Um, Hi. Well, it's, it's, <coughs> it's international. So at what point? Uh, our 
there's nothing specific in the Constitution that targets this, and this is a weakness with the Constitution. It just says people. Now, these are people. But <clears throat> are they within the boundaries of the Commonwealth? Well, no, they aren't. But we haven't... You know, the, the, the Constitution of the Commonwealth is, is still a bag of bones needing a body put on it. And they've, all they've been doing for the last 120 years is they've been desperately removing bones from that skeleton. Mm. Right? And the Australia Act and the, drug, and the signing up of this treaty were major kicks into removing that skeleton. So, uh, what treaty are you talking about? This is the Unijoy Treaty. Okay, cool. And wasn't it Whitlam's admin that signed up to it? Yes. But more importantly, it was the Attorney General that signed up to it. Now, who's been assenting to bills ever since this was signed? The Attorney General. And the Prime Minister has been appointing Governor Generals. So this is all foreign to the Constitution. They're playing games. So we need to know this information in order to structure the question. Mm. Okay. You don't have the authority to do this, and have you got a neck bone side on But again, we're, we're, we're trying to get the courts into alignment. Uh, we've been in front of the Chief Justice of the West Australian Supreme Court, and he's we tied him into Queen's Bench jurisdiction and he could not give us a remedy. Um, he could not grant us uh, a guarantee or any paper trail that said that he was able to generate a coron judis order. And we've now got him on appeal to London. So, that, so the few, there's huge ramifications and obviously letting this one go through. The ramifications are just mind-boggling. Mm. Many have tried in the past, but every other case that's tried to attack the Australia Act in particular, they've all targeted, and in, when I'm talking attack, I mean attack in London, in front of the Privy Council. Every single case has been using the Commonwealth as a defendant. It's not. It's the states. Okay. Can't we just revoke what they've done? It's, it's, not, not, it's, it's not our war. It's not our war. No. So it's nothing to revoke. There's a, the the constitution says very clearly mm. anything outside of the Commonwealth is void. It has, In other words, it's nothing to look at. It's anyway. nothing over here. Yeah. And because it's a, a contract between the United Kingdom and the Commonwealth of Australia and the people, and when I say the Commonwealth of Australia, I mean the society, not the land mass. That's the society. Because they have jurisdiction over subjects of the Queen. Right. How do you equate that with the fact that um, apart from all the scale of value, we're a constitutional monarch. Yeah, Where that means the, the monarch is in charge. That's correct. So, so that's, look, I've just read a, a document um, written in 2010 by the Government Lawyers Office yeah. where they clearly state that that is the case. So it appears that, you know, we all know that we're still a constitutional monarch, monarch until someone tries to make us a republic. Yeah. All this stuff, so the Uni Joy law in my understanding, being a newbie, that that relates heavily to the Roman Catholic Church's interests, and we're getting into the natural realm here, mm -hmm. but um, they have an interest here, an interest in the, all the acts that have been passed on behalf of the Roman Catholic Church in terms of their property interests are all signed in, and it specifically says it in the ACT, and I find that interesting within the context of what we're saying the ACT actually is. Mm -hmm. So does that you with me on that? It's very efficient on, on how they're going to get those acts passed.
practice. So we need right. to, with that knowledge, in, the, in your particular knowledge, you should be able to strike some question to the relevant authority. Well, I, well, I'm still very vague on this. Can I just ask what that tree is again, the one you just had up? Yeah. 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 It's yeah. unijoy. That's yeah. just a yeah. unijoy tree. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's, yeah. it's yeah. when they brought Vaticano down yeah. on us. Yeah. So well, I think it's all about who. I just think it's a big war for the control and the own capital. Well, if they can go and create a corporation, <laughs> if they can go and create a corporation, why can't we decide to create another corporation that sits on top of them? No. We can't. <laughs> no. But you can secede. Like WA okay. threats to do that every five years. But And there's that little place that's seceded in, in Australia. <laughs> right. well, yeah. 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 I can see this bag of rocks getting closer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've got a couple of few others. We've all put in here. So these are the men the nations of Unijoy. And when they join. Yeah. Who was his Attorney General? Who was who was the actual villain? The US is in this as well, aren't they? Oh yeah, I have a look at the nations that are in there. What's interesting is <clears throat> which department is in this treaty. And who is our trustee? And you'll find that each one of these departments that have signed up to this treaty basically write the law, the legislation for that country. And the Unidroid um, group, the 63 nations, representatives from each one of those nations form what's called an intergovernmental committee. And they then express through articles what they want to see in each one of the member nations' legislation. So we were infiltrated a long time ago. Yeah, but it's, but it can't have any, any lawful standing. Mm. Well, it doesn't here, and this is the... We, we're lucky to have a written constitution. We're all, all that's, right. Mm. that's right. So China? Indonesia signed up in 2009. Mm -hmm. It's just been renewed for us, hasn't it? It goes for six years, then renewed again, isn't it? It's no, just, it's no. just fiction. But yeah. We have six months to get out once we send notification. We the people. Yeah. But we didn't sign up. Commonwealth of Australia didn't sign right. up. It's fiction. So who signed up? Oh, hang on. The Attorney, the Attorney General, General signed yeah. up. So he's not part of the Commonwealth. It's fiction. Well, the Attorney General has been given some rather broad powers yes. since World War I. Mm. Right? They don't need to follow proper due process in order to bring about a court order or, or whatever. Mm. They're a very powerful ent entity. But this now shows, this treaty shows with respect to the Australian Attorney General that he's got dirty hands and the department's got dirty hands. Right. There's a precedence in that through the US Supreme Courts. So then that prevents them from stepping into a, a court and appearing uh, against you or drafting um, a case against you. Right. So As let's a impeach subject. them. Let's impeach the office holder. It's, it's a matter of becoming knowledgeable of this, and again I come back to drafting the question, if it's relevant to your particular scenario. So what year did Australia sign up to the... 73. It was John, who was the 2nd That's what I'm trying to find out. Who was... Now what's... I'm going to now go back to the Constitution, and what's really important in this Constitution is this section here. Nowhere in this section, in section 51 of the Constitution, is very specific. This gives power to make laws. This is where the lawmaking power exists. Right. So, what they had to do in 1973, first and foremost, they created a new queen, which was the Queen of Australia. Right, so the first question we need to ask, where did the Parliament 
achieved that right? Where did they get the power to create a queen? Mm. Uh, when you say they created the queen, like what exactly did they do? They created what was called the Royal Styles and Titles Act, 1973. Yeah. And that was the piece of legislation they used to... Yeah. Okay. So they've created, through the Parliament, a, a statute, mm -hmm. a piece of legislation. Okay. So they need to answer the question, where did the Parliament get the ability to do that? Where, in Section 51, did they achieve that ability? They never had it. There was no referendum. We know that, but no. that's the question we put to them. Yeah. And putting that question to the court, does that render everything void if they cannot answer? Well, of course, because then what you're doing is you're applying the presumption that they are under, that they have jurisdiction and the Queen of Australia has jurisdiction and that the Parliament under that Queen of Australia has jurisdiction and has power. Would one have to declare themselves as a subject of the Queen of the Commonwealth? Your status is as a subject of the Queen. But there's only one Queen that exists within the Constitution. There's only one Queen. And at the time of Federation, that was Queen Victoria. Now, to understand how any monarch after Queen Victoria can have the right of monarch, we then go to Clause 2, and it says, Act 2, um, extend, yeah, extend to the Queen's successors. Right? So, the provision of this act referring to the Queen shall extend to Her Majesty's heirs and successors and the sovereignty of the United Kingdom. So, the question then is, does the Queen of Australia fulfil Clause 2? The whole thing is ultra-virus. And yeah, we know this, but we... It's a waste of time. We, no, it's not a waste of time. No, but there's nothing... We have to change it. Somewhere we, we have to, in order to put this system that's currently, I mean, they're about to um, uh, ban cash. Steal now, <laughs> money. All right, that's just, you know, what else are they doing? We all know they're doing all these wrong things. So we need to then get proactive yes, exactly. and start asking these questions. Basic questions. What authority are you running under? Of course, they're going to say the Queen of Australia. Why? Because these Muppets have all just taken a... For the first time since Federation, the Parliament that's sitting in Canberra at the moment have all openly and publicly sworn an oath to the Queen of Australia. Well, yes. Hawke well, was the last one to take a lawful oath. The last uh, Parliament was the uh, 2016. Yeah, Bob Hawke took a lawful oath and then he, he got in and changed things. Oh, but this is Labor Party. But the focus here is on Clause 2. This is how you undo the Queen of Australia. But who's got, but someone has to make a ruling on this, which would be the High Court, as it has jurisdiction that you're in, you know, from all courts of Australia, or confirm power on the Federal Court of Australia, for wishes. But somebody has to rule on this. This is what yeah. my. Are you saying that nobody's put this question to the High Court, which I presume is the, the court? Yeah, you know, the, the court would have to answer this. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yes, no yeah. one has. So no one's doing it. No one's. Yeah, I mean, our team yeah. has yeah. Yeah. found yeah. out yeah. stuff that. Out stuff that, and we've gone back to Privy Council cases and High Court cases. How is that going anyway? I mean, that's for that's yeah, great. We're getting great well. But um, through Culleton and through the Great Australia Party and the team that the researchers, um, this is what we've uncovered, and we've been putting the questions to through FOIs, and the replies have been coming back saying yes. There is nothing relating to what you've requested. That's interesting. 
So we've got quite a collection of FOIs. Yeah, but if a fraud has been committed, which is oh, all this, is, surely the, if, the, if the Privy Council, which I, I've been told from somebody in there, that they're all pretty, they're a private corporation as well, if, if they were to carry out due, uh, due process, they would have, there would, is, is and will be, and always will be a case to answer in relation to the Act of 1986. <coughs> Are they prepared to hear the, the case of Act? The fraud that was committed at that particular time. If not, well, then it's just all pee in the wind, isn't it? Oh, they are. But that's great. If they listen, but there is a case for that, whether they like it or not. Yeah, and that's what we're doing now. And that's so, great. Sometime in the next sort of three or four hours, mm -hmm. our paperwork will be right. That's, that's the way to do it. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. So well, whatever Daryl said doesn't let any of us out of our duty well, to write and put pressure on yeah, no, him. Yeah, no, I'm not finished. Well, I am. <laughs> <laughs> because <laughs> anything you let them yeah, yeah. get away with We've got a charge. is less than what they should be paying yeah. for, and that is treason. They should be hung. Yeah. They should be hung. So, 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 so they're so very so lucky to be paid for the Republic. Are writing to our MP and saying, can you confirm uh, what I've done what is the I've drafted up yeah, the notice, which is available on the Great Australia Party um, Facebook and What's that? And, all that. and that notice is for subjects of the Queen to fill out and send to their local House of Representatives member and senator for their state. Mm. And it's because it's in the form of a notice, we're giving them you know, 28 days to reply. Um, uh, and there may be legal action taken. So if I could have got my hands on it, I would have been distributing it tonight because while we're lobbying against the cash yeah. grab bill, it's a very useful notice to be sending to them and asking the question at the same time. So this is what we're really forcing them into, which is section 46. And the key words in section 46 are um, that we can sue for it in a court of competent jurisdiction. Because I'm like all representative is the Speaker of the House, so that would be a bit of a scale. Absolutely. And he's well Bring aware. Bloody ass down. He's well aware. I, I stood on the last day of, uh, when I think it was the last day of the election, uh, on the Saturday, with him, um, handing out how to vote for us. And yeah, he's very nervous, along <laughs> with a lot of people they, within the system, especially the Australian Electric Commission about what we're doing. These people are basically gunning their engines ready to run off. Jolly good. Well, we should be joining the numbers to put the pressure on. With that letter, um, do you recommend that that applied federally and to the state members as well? Yes. Yep. Both. Uh, the states are culprits, yep. but more than anything, the federal um, both levels, uh, upper and lower house, they've all openly abused the schedule. Yeah. Um, and of course the schedule is the oath that they are meant to be taking. And the, there is a section of the constitution that binds them to this schedule. Yeah, right. There is a section. So, um, in this case, it's going to be to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. Okay, now, this is something else we need to be aware of. When we, it's all very well to hear the words being expressed by a police officer or whatever when they take an oath to Her Majesty. They will say to Queen Elizabeth II, but when we see it in writing, Right? This is very important. When we see it in writing, we must look for the Roman numerals. So it should be Queen Elizabeth and then the two capital I's, okay? When we see the second written, that's the Queen of Australia. Oh, okay. I figured that's good to know. 
I would have thought it'd be the opposite. No, yeah. because you go back through monarch history. It's always been yeah. revenue. It's always been yeah. revenue. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, the police don't take an oath, because I go to the academy a lot. They take an oath of her gracious majesty, and that's the end of it. Right. So there's no police officer. Well, in that's Australia okay. That has a law for yeah. But that's okay. Uh, her majesty is what was expressed in all Victorian legislation up until 1986. So it was the Queen, Her Most Gracious Majesty. That's okay. That's acceptable. Yeah, that is acceptable. But when they say Queen Elizabeth II, and it's written as the second, it's Queen of Australia. And when they spell it the second, S-E-C-O-N-D, that's Queen of Australia. Some of them just say that I've been reading the Acts and looking at the O's on the various Acts, and sometimes they just say the Queen and that's it, and it's make O for the firm of force. Yeah, that's for sure. It just says the Queen. I'm like, That's okay, because the Constitution just says the Queen as well. Right, okay. The Queen is okay. Yeah, the Queen is okay. They're all given the notices, giving them a time frame, and basically, you know, you've raised a bit of a stick. Can you then sit back and take your time as to when you're going to exercise the sanction well, as a collective? Really, because Section 46 basically says that um, it's a disqualification. Right. So once you, and this is why I've put this section up, so section 42, every senator and every member of the House, right, shall, before taking his seat, make and subscribe before the Governor General or a person authorised by the Governor General an oath or affirmation of allegiance set forth in the schedule. So it's binding. This is the binding clause. Now, if, if then we, once we establish, either by non-reply, okay, so if they don't reply, they've admitted guilt. So then we default them. And there's money attached. There's money attached, but yeah. this is, it's more about, okay, this court of competent jurisdiction. <laughs> Where's, where do, you find where do we go to that? Right. <laughs> Every single day they're sitting well disqualified, there's a nice hefty penalty. Yeah. They have to pay. But we go to their justices of the peace. The same way we get Now, a justice of the peace sits in every suburb, and those who are prepared to sit as a court exercising summary jurisdiction. Now, in order to convince them of this, we show them the, um, this piece of legislation. Uh, and there's the section. Can you read it out? Okay. You want to read it out? Court of summary jurisdiction means any justice of the peace or magistrate of a state or territory sitting as a court of summary jurisdiction. That's a court. That's a recognisable court. By whom? It's recognised by the Constitution. Oh, by the Constitution. This is the Constitution. No, I just asked This is the Act Interpretation Act, right? 1901. Okay, I just asked that. Okay. Yeah. So, the Constitution, the Acts Interpretation Act and the Judiciary Act are to be read as one. Okay? Okay, got that. Mm -hmm. Those three acts, because the Acts Interpretation Act helps you interpret the Constitution mm -hmm. and helps you interpret the laws that are created by Parliament. Okay. A silly question, Daryl. Um, who is the Queen of Australia? Well, that's a very good question, she. and uh, this is something only they can answer. That is a criminal person. It's a corporation <laughs> soul. Yeah. So yeah. any woman in Australia could say that claim, make a claim that yeah, they're the Queen of fine. Australia, and then that would yeah. be changed to her if cool. they registered it. They've registered it as a corporation soul. Um, They've yeah. also registered with uh, ASIC um, the. 
Queen Elizabeth uh, the second written. Mm. How would they explain that though? If somebody actually asks regarding that's a good question. But how was that in Queen Australia? After they said that. Okay. Well, what powers and where did they derive the power in mm. order to establish that entity? But if Her Majesty allows this to happen, wouldn't that be sort of like a dishonour against her? Yep. She's been missing well, what she does, she acts on advice. Now, what we're actually honing in on is who gave her the poor advice. And it turns <laughs> out it's somebody in England. It's one of her ministers in England. So she got poor advice. The Crown can do no wrong. And the Queen can do no wrong. To the mother. But they can receive poor advice and act on that poor advice because they get advice from their ministers within the Westminster Parliament. Our ministers here in Australia haven't got that ability. They can only express uh, uh, you know, maybe a, a definition or an interpretation through the Governor General being the Queen's representative and then that Governor General can pass that question on, or whatever it was that the ministers wanted, to the Her Majesty. I can see a bit of a problem with the Privy Council because I learned that they've got some kind of mandate in their constitution such that they are sworn only to protect the Queen. <coughs> That's their primary duty. So if she's out of line, how do they bring her into line if their only job is to cover she her does, backside? It's, again, it's whoever is advising her. Now, the Constitution of the Commonwealth was created with the Privy Council's advice to Her Majesty. So the Privy Council advised Queen Victoria that this was okay. She signed the Australia and the Queen can't I've got a I've got a question. Uh, can you show me a historical um, situation where power of the government or king or, or dictator surrendered to the Queen's law? Uh, it's power to people. Show me one example. Of power. Yeah, so existing power, the government or dictator or whoever, came to people and says, look. I mucked this up, you know, sorry about that folks, you know, I'm putting this up, I'm not up to it. Uh, look, I'm I'm finishing I'm finished here, I just you know dismantle all my powers, you people you take care of it and you you like yourself and you think, well tell me one example in this story. Well I've searched. The only person I could find was in Russia, Yeltsin, who was drunk, and and he said oh, I'm not up to it and put in charge Putin. Whether it's better or good, that's irrelevant. But that's the only one I could find. Right. Power is gain or loss and the tip of a spear. If you have no army, no power, yet it is all just talk. Look what's happened to Kaleton. Soon as he touched the nerve, they put him into bankruptcy. If he touches the more nerves, they kill him. Put him in jail. Well, there's power there. Yeah, that's right. There's power there. But look what's power there. Yeah, forget about that. They don't care about this. They care only about how to protect their position and they think they are in charge, they have armies and police, and they can liquidate you any time. Yeah, but they, no, they can't. They can't. Because yes, not, not, not here, not here. Ah, uh, yes. Well, look, they've done it to, look what's happened to Hanson. They put her in jail. Yeah, but yeah, what's, yeah, what's happened, yeah, what's but happened with the colors? Yeah, well, it's okay, but, but because of the, but the thing is, if you start to touch their own earth, right, that's what Carlton did. We, we, I've seen it in Parliament, what happened with that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, initially, he was praised. Right? Good boy, you tell him it's a bastard, you a mistake, you're correct, blah, 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 blah. He said it's not a mistake, you did not ask the right questions. And then he hit the wrong man, right to the high court. Bingo, suddenly gets bankrupt. Right? That's, yes. Now that's the first warning. The next one is watch out. No, no. No. Yeah. I can no. What's happened with Carl? I was directly told and threatened in yes. my life. Yes. All right. Yeah. I've had three war firms. Yeah. There's some very heavy issues sitting behind this, and I'm not talking about going to pedophilia ring and stuff mm -hmm. that just dropped in my lap. But I have had my wife threatened. I've had my family's yeah. life threatened. Sure. And they done. will do it. All right. Yeah. So if you live in, you live in fairy land. I'm an educated person, a pretty straight guy, no 
bit of speeding fines, that's about it. <laughs> um, that has happened to me, and it's been going for five years. And I have said to my face, we will destroy you. And others I know. Yeah, that's they said that the... the Straight but my face. Have, you, have you asked them any of the questions I've raised to you? Uh, well, I, I have, but I've just, I've won, but I've won by <coughs> taking on the law firms under the Uniform Law um, Application Act 2014. That's, that was, it didn't cost me any money, so I just took them on directly. I'm about to take the third law firm on, so that's where I'm attacking them, because in, in the, the, the court system itself, I'm just, I just don't know enough. Right. I don't know enough yeah, to tell you this. But to, to sort of bring it back to what Paul was saying about yeah. Carlton, yeah. Carlton has probably got a string of court cases and charges that's been applied against him since 2014. Yeah. All of them are indictable, jailable offences. Right? And no, he's been he's been made insolvent. He has not been made bankrupt. That's okay. okay. It's different. Now we've actually called out the insolvency arm of government. We've we've also gone to the federal police. When the 2018 election was being held, he filled out the nomination form saying he was not insolvent. Now, the federal police then jumped on him and said, well, that's an indictable offence mm -hmm. and we're going to throw you under the bus. Mm -hmm. Now, we had already registered a complaint with the federal police relating to that insolvency mm -hmm. registration. Mm -hmm. And the federal police are doing nothing. Mm -hmm. And that's what yeah. And they will do nothing. Yeah. We have neutralised the federal police, we've neutralised the CDPP, the Commonwealth Department of Public Prosecutions, and we've done all of this through FOIs. Well done. We've actually got FOIs saying very clearly to the Attorney General, can you please provide authority for the Commonwealth Department of Pro Prosecutions? And their reply was, there is no authority. <laughs> there wow. is no paper. <laughs> gives them authority. The federal police have also been put under this heading and they are anything created after 1973 is what's known as a legal nonsense because the Queen of Australia has been the, the authority and the power that they've been utilising. Now look at section 51. The Parliament shall, subject to this constitution, have power to make laws. And yet here we are. And here we are. And we've been asking them, show us where you got the power to create the Queen of Australia. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> sorry, we haven't got that power. The Attorney General has replied to us very clearly, there is no paperwork that establishes the power of the Parliament to create the Queen of Australia. But they're still not listening. That's what they're saying. But no, they are. So they are listening. They have to touch Carlton. They haven't touched him. So he's at my place. Dirty hand. So 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 you got all the paperwork. Queen of Australia is void. Yep. Which we know. And yet you've got the all the reps and senators swearing in front of Governor General. The Queen of Australia and the Governor General smiling, shaking their hands, and having a photograph taken. Yeah. Governor General is a uh, couple of treason as well, right? Yeah. And, and, and that should be raised to the Privy Council because that Governor General therefore needs to be Dismissed. indicted. Indicted, right? In order to do this, and, and we realise all of this is a, 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 that's part of the light at the end of the tunnel, and it's not the light of an oncoming train. But it is. We, we know, we first have to establish ourselves within the United Kingdom. Again, we have to establish ourselves. The, the barrier that they put up, mm. and the states put this up, is the Australia Act Request Act. That's the barrier that they put up. And the United Kingdom keep hitting this barrier. When we go there, they keep saying, well, look at this Australia Act Request Act. And now we're going in to seek a declaration and to seek their interpretation 
of whether they had the power to do this. Mm -hmm. And section 51 of the Constitution does not grant the power of those entities to approach the United Kingdom under that heading because nothing in the Constitution grants the power to take away the Constitution and replace it with some of the, uh, uh, the, the state's in the right of independence again. So, they, so which minister in the UK do you have to go through? One more second. One more second. But I pretty simple. Let's stand simply and find out which we're not fighting anybody. Today, I have a magic wand. Mm. Well, I don't want to get it all straight. You are in charge with some more smart people. You're back to the old system. Bob, all these groups are out of the place, right? And you govern. Now, all the legislation, all the rules they created, whether bad or good, they invalid, right? right? Now, you're going to have very, very shocked and, a, and an angry population. Because they'll be asking, where is our good duty? We want our support. 40% of people's own government support. They're going to hate you. Absolutely going to hate you. If you took power over without any bloodshed today and tried to explain it to people, you'll have people against you. Yeah, this but wait till this cash grab bill goes yeah, through well, and see how happy everybody is. Well, you'll see <laughs> how, well, you will see how, well, how many people have cash today. Very few. Most of them have debts. They it doesn't make $20 in the box, aren't they? That's right. Okay, yeah, but the thing is, they, <laughs> but they, that doesn't affect them. It's the minority. No, it will affect everybody. No, 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 the only no, country no, that's no. really done any good here no, is no. Iceland, where they walked yeah. into the parliament and said, you're all the same. They've done it in all of Europe, and they didn't say who. I was there just now. I said, yeah, yeah, all of Europe. You have negative interest rates in a bank in Germany already for one euro. They charge you negative interest rates. Right. It's that's a bank. Case for yeah, that's yeah. right. For, and people say, no, no. They are so, people are like lead. I'm telling you, unless you have power, unless you have buttons, I wish you can you change, change nothing. Look, one simple example. How many regimes America change? How many countries they attack? Big ones. Yeah. Bar one, North Korea. Because of one thing, they have atomic weapon. And they can cause such a trouble, they says, we'll throw a bomb on Japan, and then back off. Look at, look at uh, President. He's tippy-toeing, oh, he's my mate, he's my friend, oh, and he would be killing the others running into Syria until Russians came in and Chinese came and said, hey, don't boy, stop, right? Now, that was one stop, but that one hoodlum in North Korea, who is absolutely flat broke, people starving that time to our family and her needs. Yeah, and yet, yet, he's got one thing, atomic weapon. No, he hasn't, he's got the CIA. Yeah. No. Um, he's yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's, no, that's serious. He's he a CIA puppet. He's, he's put there. He was set up by him. He's, 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 he's educated in Switzerland. This is all. This is all. No. He's part of the time. Time. But believe me, if you have weapon, you have power. If you don't have power, you have power. But what we've got to do is getting off track. They have a lot of We have one advantage. We have one advantage. Back to Daryl. Getting off track. We have one advantage, and that is the 31st of January. England stepped out of the EU. Yeah. Yeah. Right? yeah, yeah. They've already indicated the courts have now uh, have to wipe out any EU precedents in Yay. their courts. And what we're doing, we're there for a reason. I mean, there are greater powers above all of this. So we're there for a reason. We're there to remind the United Kingdom mm -hmm. of the Commonwealth and that political union that never got approval yeah. for the United Kingdom to go to the mm -hmm. EU because they needed, as, yeah. as I said before, and, you, and the definition of the Commonwealth is very clear and in painstaking detail in the, con in the Constitution through the Quick and Garum. You are one state part of that whole union. Yeah. If one of those states decides to step out of that union, that, and wants to do it via a referendum, which is what the United Kingdom did, they needed to go to every other state in order to get approval to go to the European Union. Yeah. And they didn't. And this was a deal that was done between Whitlam and Prime Minister Heath. Yeah. They sat down in a room yeah. together and just said, listen, yeah. we want to go to the EU, but we don't want to have the burden of dragging Australia and Canada and all these other member states into this deal. Now, the moment they did that, that nullified their membership with the EU. And the EU knew this, and this is why the EU is actually crumbling now. Yeah. They're desperate. 
the, 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 we're in the 65th week of protests in France. Yeah. The, the, the people have had enough of this globalism and we're there for a good reason. The, the, the courts are now, we've spent the last week just talking with the registrar at the Privy Council and we've convinced them that we've got a, a chance and a, and a voice and they're now looking back at what happened in 2009 and they're saying, well, gee, when the Privy Council was shifted into the Supreme Court, it didn't have the same power as it had um, historically as a direct advisor to Her Majesty. So all of this is something that we're forcing this system back to. And it will mean way. a change. It will mean a change. What that change is, I don't know. It's their contract. And the... We've got a clear line in the sand now about who are the enemies and um, who are the subjects of the Queen under the common law. And those who feel comfortable to be a subject, come over. It's your choice. Well done on covering So it. we've just got to stand by what history has been dictating to us. And no standing army, they're, they're, they're not going to be shooting anybody. There's just going to be people running in all sorts of directions because they, are, they, they are, have actually been part of the problem. But there's also a forgiveness clause, and we have to enact that. And uh, I know when I was sitting in Parliament, um, there's what's called the Odges, which is the, the rule book for the Senate. And the Senate's the High Court of Parliament in Australia, yeah. and it has a forgiveness clause in it. So if any any senator misbehaves, they just have to call on that clause, and it's an automatic forgiveness. And this is this is this inheritance that we have through the coronation oath, and this is what makes the, the Commonwealth the Commonwealth. Yeah, it's, it's, it's an historical. But they will not go on to the other power. They are. Screwing themselves. Yeah, they right. are making so many mistakes, these people. The and right. one of the, the problems that they have, and this is why we've been able to uncover all of this, uh, the moment you start misbehaving, you lose what's called discernment. And discernment gives you wisdom. And it gives you the ability to bring this information to where you are. And this is what our team has been doing. We've, well, we've I wonder had this, if and the people who are outside of this, they disconnected from that wisdom and discernment. And they've just been bumbling all the way through and leaving mistakes and, and all of these gems to pick up on and go, well, gee, guys. And they say, so what? It's, it's a matter of, no, it's not so much so what. We've already proven through this tax case and these are people, when you see the powers that they gave the Commissioner of Taxation mm -hmm. and the Deputy Commissioner, when they run away, you know you've got them. Yeah. They ran, and this is one of the most powerful Deputy Commissioners in Australia's history, Ravenella, um, and he quit he he left the job. Once he saw that one yeah. page <laughs> we put to them, but what, Sorry, what, what was the case of English play? This, this was Mike Palmer's case. Yeah, but what, did, what, did, what expired? We said, show us that you, sir, as a deputy commissioner, have jurisdiction over a subject of the court. Yeah, but what, what he was uh, claiming, the commissioner? The, oh, he was claiming over a million dollars. Yeah. And yeah. wanting to screw him from left, right and centre. Yeah. Bankrupting the whole lot. Throwing him under the bus. So using the regulations. Yeah. Now, yeah. one of the powers that the deputy commissioner has been given is I can pluck a figure out of mid-air yeah, sure. and make you pay that Absolutely. without having to justify that now number they're giving it to at all. But they've been doing that for years. Yeah, absolutely. They've been doing this for years. Yeah, exactly. Now, they generated a, a, a bogus figure. Yeah. So we didn't look at that. We didn't even get into the argument. We just said, who the hell are you? Show us your authority. And they ran. Does that mean that anybody could do that when they don't want to pay tax? Anybody. Tax. People have. Tax is actually have. in their own term illegal. People have. Yeah. They're illegal. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you're, you're, you're on the money, right? That, that, you know, that, that, do we just print out a form, put our little 
writing signature on it, send it in instead of a tax return. Unilateral contracts is the answer because you, when you committed to them, you weren't given full disclosures. It comes under a unilateral mistake. Yeah, it's a mistake, but you have to express yourself as a subject of a crime. Hmm. You, you, you run any other um, status, you are vulnerable. They've covered all of those bases. Yeah. Well, yeah. So well, that was just looking at the way of step by step. There was a bloke, you don't have to say the name, he ended up in the court, right? There was a taxation officer, you pay me this, plus penalty. And I all have been through all the done that, right? They plug it out of the uh, total, and you said, okay, forget about all this. What was the next step? You said, to me, show us your jurisdiction, correct? Right? Yeah, to show us the jurisdiction that you have. So and you said, you're, you're, the, you're a subject of the Queen in the affidavit? Yeah, absolutely. It has to be written in the affidavit. That's the, that's the so what, yeah, what we initially did was we put what's called a notice of conditional appearance. Right, so we're not stepping into the jurisdiction. We're questioning. From the moment we step into that court, we're questioning. We're saying, well, we're not prepared to plea until such time as these conditions are met. And the conditions are... And you always, in, in a court, courtroom situation, you place your focus on whoever it is that's brought you into the court, not the court itself. It's always whoever has brought you into the court. when you put forward a notice of appeal, as it comes down... Then you've the accepted appeal, the yeah, jurisdiction. The word appeal becomes fiction. It's a, it's a vowel. I think it well, starts from a vowel, but, and it becomes a proper okay, well, form in a vowel, which means that's, that notice of appeal becomes fiction well, from there on. That, that might be the case. That's what people are falling down. It's the grammar. No, it might be done no, no, yes. true. You don't. You, 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 what have I said? I said, we stepped into the court using what's called a notice of conditional appearance. But that that's it. Is fiction but, in, in syntax grammar. And I just, I'm not knocking your knowledge. Just to just say, let, let, him, let, him let him explain. Let him explain. This, this is so important. You're only there on the, con uh, the, the, on the condition that whoever it is that's brought you to the court fulfills conditions that you lay out. And until those are met, then until those the court's are met, not in order. I cannot <coughs> plea, I cannot file a defence, I cannot do anything that, I cannot jump through any of the hoops that you not put there. And this is crucial. This is where this is why they couldn't bring us to. They all they had left to do was to go. Well, um, listen, you, you, they, they put a time thing on. So said, well, we've got 28 days to file a notice of defence. And we said, well, no, fulfil these conditions. Yeah. And the registrar said, yes, actually, they're right. So now, I'm as the court putting the onus back on the plaintiff being the tax office, to say, can you fulfil these conditions? Can you show you have jurisdiction over a subject of the Queen? Can you show that your status, your standing in this court, is traceable back to the Constitution? And because that is what, happened, what happened then? What happened then? The ATO solicitors didn't know whether they were Arthur or Arthur. <laughs> <laughs> they they, they, they were wait. that stressed by the end of that first day. I love it. They <laughs> left and that group of solicitors embarrassed and left. That was the first victim. Yeah. Then the next lot came in and they then just applied the same pressure. Yeah. Um, and we applied the, the pressure back. Okay. And then they tried to get the court to join with them to say, oh, that's all ridiculous. Uh, this is just vexatious, frivolous, and some use of process. And we said, well, until you can fulfill the conditions, what you're doing is an abuse of process. Turn the table back on them. And the court recognised that and said, well, come on. She then put them on notice and said, now you have 30 days to fulfill these conditions. To them, yeah. To them, yeah. To them. Okay, so what happened then? So what happened then, it went into neutral, okay? The court was then, because we also asked the court to show its traceability. If you raise and a jurisdictional matter, it's, it's an estoppel. They cannot proceed. They can't proceed. So what happens is the court had then come back with this two-page document telling us how much the registrar earned and telling us <laughs> that it was really uh, only 
been given jurisdiction in 2017 to sit in a matter under federal jurisdiction. So what did you guys say to that? Well, they've been trying to grab us to take us to trial, and so far no one's been able to fulfil the conditions. Mm -hmm. So what we've been doing is we've been just, just uh, applying <coughs> the same pressure through the conditional appearance to every group of new solicitors and barristers so that the tax I office can provide. The question, uh, how many times have you had to go to court? Uh, twice. Twice. Yeah. But, but Daryl, you can only do all of this because of your foundation was in the affidavit, right? And that's what... The foundation was in the conditional appearance. Yeah, but yeah. and what you wrote in the affidavit as a subject of the Queen. You can't yeah. say, you can't... We were in court recently. You can't do any of this unless you actually put in the affidavit, on the paper, that you're a subject of the Queen. That's right. And that's yeah. the only reason they listen to you. Because everything has to be by affidavit. It has to be on the paper. Otherwise, they just say, we don't have to talk about it. Go in and talk. And what's happened since? The registrar, the registrar has applied orders. Right? Now, when we looked at those orders, they were signed by her assistant. <laughs> so then we come into the Coram Judas and the Coram non Judas. And this is where the county court now is in default. They have not been able to provide a Coram Judas order. They cannot say that that registrar's orders are Coram Judas. I know, them. I know what a Coram Judas order looks like. I'm looking for the certificate. They cannot provide, and so, this, it's basically been put off sign and die until such time as they can do it. Now, this frustrates Mike because he just wants to get this to the other end. closed. Yeah. And of course, we won't close this door until we can show to the United Kingdom who drafted the contract that they were misled and they were deceived. And then once we can show them they were deceived, then they'll just go, well, there's obviously someone here, and we've put them on presumption to provide who it was, because there'll be one or two individuals that they can throw under the bus uh, with respect to giving Her Majesty poor advice. Then they're left with, what are we doing here? Yeah. That's the problem that they have. And this is, I haven't got a crystal ball, <clears throat> and I can only put a suggestion to the United Kingdom what to do, but... Get rid of all the taxes. The, um, getting back to this tax issue, uh, we can defund them fairly quickly if we know how to do it. How does the worker ask their employer, where do you get the authority to tax me? Because tax is only about um, the corporation making a profit. So they yeah, they've got us all down as corporations. So. Yeah. The best way is to pay it and get it back later. Yeah. Pay it and get it back. Yeah. Which country is the county court? Hang on. I want to know this. <laughs> in, the, in the Corporations Act, they got us down as corporation sole. Uh, no, so the Queen's corporation sole. But we're down as corporation aggregate. No. Oh, no. Yeah. 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 Well, that's what came out the other day with um, yeah. Darren Dixon on um, Know Your Rights. That they've got us. Oh, yeah. 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 We're, we're which county is I'd love to know which county the county court is in. Anybody know which county it's in? Mm. That's the county meet in Dublin, Ireland? It's in Dublin. Well, that's the county. Okay. Counties now. That's, that's the restriction that they have. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> this is the restriction. <laughs> so, what's that about? The, 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 the corporation would know. Hang on, hang on. Quiet down. Sorry. The corporation aggregate. No, no, hang on. I'd just like you to look at what I've got up on the board because that's going to answer this question. Again, it's in section 51. And again, it says, I'll read it out. The Parliament only have the power to make legislation or laws relating to foreign corporations, trading and financial. So where in the Constitution did the Parliament get the ability to turn all of us into corporations sold? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Queen of Australia. Exactly. Whitworth. 
<laughs> this is all it comes back to the question. It comes back to the where did you get the ability to turn this into a corporation? So invested power, more power. And that's it. Is this a subject of the coin applicable to the uh, taxation laws? This is the question we ask. Mm -hmm. We know they cannot give you a positive. They can't say, well, yes, here's the legislation. Mm -hmm. They have no ability to do that. But they still govern. They only govern because people aren't asking uh, these questions. Yeah, because we, so before we no, turn, well, one, one more question. Uh, how many people do you think, the young and the older, mm -hmm. really know about this? I well, they're not going to know while no, there's no, only no, how many yeah, years. Right, right. So I can tell you practically oh, it's right. zero. Yeah. Well, I zero. Work, I'm an expert in finance, <coughs> been for 40 years of a private bank as a head up in Australia and New Zealand. I know that my whole industry knows a lot of people that are in oh, yeah. know about the tax as a voluntary system. Sure. I mean, what I deal with is tax internationally in here, or I did. So I know how that system works. I know how the law works in relation to finance, corporations, trusts, vested in all that stuff, right? And I, I haven't heard anyone in this group that knows much about that yet. You're, 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 no, I don't know much about your, your law perspective on things.